what we have here is a, uh, it looks like a tube setup in a very creative uh, box, but you can see the tube there. And then uh, here's the creator now. This is Dan AI6XG. And get him in focus. All right. So why, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a tube transmitter that I built. Uses one tube for the oscillator and amplifier, and uh, have a low pass filter and the RF indicator in here also. And it operates off a 12 volt battery, and I just boost the 12 volt battery voltage to the 200 volts needed for the plate and the screen of vacuum tube. To receive, I use a QCX. So the QCX works as a receiver and also the keyer. So you can use a full paddle with it. And then uh, I built a transmit receive switch. So it's semi break in. You hit the paddle and you send code. The transmitter works. And then once you stop, it goes into receive. And Rex and I use it for activation this morning. We carry it up to uh, Rocky Ridge, W6NC268. And we both got four contacts each on it, and all the reports were about 559, and it worked pretty well on 40 meters. All right. Well, thanks a lot, man. And that was early this morning, right? You were, you were doing this that was, like at uh, 5.30 in the morning or something like that? We started out, <laughs> yeah, I left here at 4, 5.30, and we uh, started the activation about 7 a.m. Yeah. So the sun was rising, it was cool, foggy, and the tube kept us nice and warm. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, uh, were you with them, Jeff? No, I was not willing to wake up that early, so I, I came straight here. <laughs> so Jeff, uh, AA6XA, Dan, AI6XG, and then Rex, are you still the regional manager for W6? Association manager oh, for yeah. California. Yes. Right. And these are our JerryNet uh, soda right. representatives right here, and they are at the booth for uh, we invented KK6. There we go. <laughs> this is not our table. We're That's not their table, but yeah, there. they're just uh, camping out here. JerryNet, we invented ham radio. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're known for. Thanks, guys. And this is Wayne, the owner of uh, Elecraft. You're the owner of Elecraft, right? Or, yeah, co-founder. Uh, nice to meet you, yes. And uh, very big news, it's all over Twitter. This little device right here. I haven't even looked at Twitter yet. You haven't? No, what's happening on Twitter? There's just a lot of people talking about it right now. I did hear that we, that we broke the soda blogosphere um, yesterday. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, here, why don't we get you on here? Is this a microphone? Yes. Which side? Right up here, right in the okay. fuzzy part. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the new KH1? Sure. So I'm Wayne in 6KR, um, and what we were looking for is a radio that was half the size and half the weight of the KX2. So the KH1 is the first of a you know, new product line of handheld radios, mm -hmm. and handheld radios really help because there are times when there just isn't a place to sit. You got bugs, you've got mud, you got snow. So actually being able to hold the radio in your hand really allows you to, to get on the air much more conveniently from any place. And the way I like to operate is I'll go out in the field, I will hike around for a while, find a place that looks like it has a beautiful overlook, stop and take the radio out. And because this radio has the antenna and the log tray, et cetera, already built in, I'm literally on the air in about 20 seconds. Yeah. So 
This particular configuration has the log tray, the keyer paddle, an automatic antenna tuner, a large battery, a battery charger, and the whip antenna. Uh, everything built in, we call that the Edgewood package. And that's uh, basically all of the options. And it's literally 20 seconds for me to go from in my pocket to fully deployed and on the air. So wow. that's the reason for the KH-1. And the criteria that I have my, for my own personal um, operation just turns out to be also pretty close to what the soda people need. So yes. that's yes, the reason the for the radio. soda device. Yeah, that's a great little, little rig right there. And right now you sell the radio for about 550. The, I the basic uh, KH1 is uh, 569, I think. Uh -huh. yeah, five, 549. 549. Yeah, that's yeah. the basic radio. Okay. Yep. And then the everything we see here. Yeah. So what you're seeing here is, is the all. Edgewood package I was talking the about Edgewood. earlier. So this okay. has all the options. Yes. So right. it has the keyer, the built-in tuner, the little log pad. And, and I can sh I can show you the uh, how you get to the battery. Okay. Although, if you have the internal battery charger, then you don't need to take the battery out yes. ever. But I'll just show you where it goes. Included there. So I'm going to uh, close the log with tray and take off the whip. Mm -hmm. And I will just attach He's the He's taken off the radio. whip here. He attaches it to the radio. So now the, the whip is stored. To get to the back cover, though, you actually have to have the whip on. So we're going to go inside now. Okay. So there's the interior. Ah, you yes. You see the uh, large 2.6 amp hour battery. This is a 2.6 so amp hour battery. battery. Lithium amp. Oh, yeah. charger module. And it has a charger module in there. Have the world's smallest automatic antenna. The world's smallest ATU. And this is the same battery as what's in the KX2? That's right. It's the same but this, exact this radio is. draws a lot less current than a KX2, so... This radio draws a lot less current. Seat, 50 milliamps. So, yes, it will last a very long time on a soda activation. But, yes. There it is, ready to stick in your pocket. Yes. Perfect. Well, thanks a lot, Wayne. All right. Thank you. Yeah. in Marriott in San Ramon where the event happens. It takes up all the conference rooms, all the, the little sub uh, forum rooms and it's quite an event. They have on-site food but there are a lot of great food options elsewhere. Uh, we're not too far from a little uh, area that has some shopping and grocery stores and, and various restaurants. But uh, quite a nice location for this annual event. Uh, it's a collection of Northern California hams 